What's up, divas and Devo? So you guys already know what day it is, what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. And from that point on, we're just going to get into this Real Talk because, as you guys see, I don't have my backdrop up. I don't have my makeup on. I'm really trying to get ready to leave to go to New York. And just being aggravated is enough for me. <sighs> so you know how you have to just take, like, a deep breath and just, like, woosa and woosa? That's exactly how I feel right now, like, woosa, just woosa. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great week. As for me, definitely am. I am just have, like, a long morning, and, you know, it's like this. I'm not going to let people get under my skin. I'm definitely not going to let people get under my skin. But I'm not going to tolerate certain shit either. With that being said, you know, this real talk is probably not going to be that long because, like I said, I'm really trying to get ready. Um, I do have to go get Mumsy. You know, I really did not plan on doing it this late in the day, but my eyelashes came off last night. So I had to leave and go to an appointment this morning without any lashes on. And it's super hot in my room because it's getting hot outside in general. So it's like, you know what? Uh, let's see. Either do the real talk without any makeup or don't do the real talk and try to keep it like as short as possible. So I didn't want to not do it at all. So I definitely was like, let me just at least do two of them. Okay. So you guys already know the jest. If you have a real talk that you would like for me to talk about, you can go ahead and send your email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk. And on that note, we're going to get into it. Make sure you guys check out my recent videos. Um, I did include Tati in a new video with a bob wig. Because um, you guys know I do not do the bob styles. But she looked so cute in it. Like, she looked really, really nice. But I did do some new hair by Get It Girl Hair. And um, they are the black-owned wholesale business. So they are located on the East Coast. You can definitely check them out. The prices are really good. The hair is nice as well. But make sure you guys check that video out. Okay, like, show me some love. Show me some love. Okay, so let's get into this real talk. Okay, hi April. My name is Isha or I Isha. I wrote you for a um, I wrote you for a real talk twice. My man is in the military, so he decided he wanted to break up with me. So he decided he wanted to break up with me, cause he thinks I'm friends with my baby daddy on Facebook, and he thinks we're sleeping around. Now he says I'm always on my Facebook for a long period of time. He be checking. It shows that I'm active. I thought he was a good man. He even told me that he's not for me, and I can do better. And better is not him. Now, I've been faithful to him, faithful, and been waiting for him, but now I don't know. So he wrote back on Facebook and told me we were okay. Now, I feel like now I feel like cheating on him and doing all kind of stuff. I even have a dildo, but I barely use it. He's controlling and not even here. So now I'm thinking about everything. I'm in love with him. I don't want anyone else. I just want him. I just need some advice. Thank you. I watch all your videos. Keep up the good work. He will be home in June of 2018. The little pretty brown skin young lady. So basically, she got a man in the military and he's just bugging out. He's basically thinking that she's speaking to her baby daddy again because she's on Facebook for long periods of time and he'll be checking and it'll say she's active and she thinks that he thinks that her Isha and her him are sleeping around let me tell you something Facebook can say you're active because you don't sign out that does not necessarily mean that you on Facebook okay I don't understand what people get over Facebook like you cannot allow these social media things platforms break up your happy home, your happy relationship, your happy family. Like I don't allow any type of social media to, to interfere with my life because it's just social media. At the end of the day, all of these people that are on your social media watching you and yada, 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 they don't even know you like that. And I mean, you may do know some people that are on your Facebook or Instagram that personally know you, but he has to keep in mind, her boyfriend needs to keep in mind, Facebook is not just hers. Everybody and their grandmother have Facebook, okay? For real, newborns got Facebook. 
Like seriously, Facebook is it's cool. It's Facebook. I'm not. I don't really like being into Facebook and stuff. I go in there, and post what I gotta post, and go about my business. I don't. Some people be on there all day long trolling, but I feel like this. If she wants to cheat on him, she should have been to that before any of this Facebook shit came up. So now her boyfriend is basically like, well, we're okay, you know. They they stop arguing about dumb shit and they okay. But now she feels like cheating on him and doing all kind of stuff. First of all. For one, honey, don't do all kind of crazy thoughty shit because you want to make a point or prove your point to him. OK, let's not do that. OK, if you want to prove a point, prove a point in a positive way, not go spread your legs to everybody and do all kind of crazy shit and start cheating on your man. Because that's not going to hurt nobody really that much. But you in the long run, you know, what I'm saying you're going to be the one with the reputation and the name, not him. He's just going to be like, I told you so. I told you so. I knew it. I knew better. So, you know what I'm saying? So, don't go trying to prove a point by sleeping with everybody. Excuse me. Oh, my God. My allergies are killing me. Second of all, okay, cool. You got a dildo. That ain't got nothing to do with cheating. If he's not here, then use that shit. Oh, my God. If he's not here, use the shit. Like, a bitch got one, too. Hello, I got this nice little glass one that I was sent. And we got this little swirly thing about, girl, please. I'm just saying. But using a dildo is not a form of cheating. It's not a form of sleeping around. That is you pleasing your own self. But if you feel like you want to cheat, then maybe you should not be with him. You know what I'm saying? Don't go out there putting yourself out there when you know damn well that you love this man. You already just said to me, you know, this is the part that be confusing me with women sometimes. They be like, I love him. I only want him, but then I want to go cheat. Like, like, um, bitch, do you love him or do you love the thought of him? Do you love yourself or do you like the things that he can do to you or for you? Like, which one is it going to be? Like, I know y'all are tired of me sneezing, but I'm so sorry. Um, if you love somebody, then, you know, sometimes we have to take the good with the bad. Not too bad, honey. Like, if he's, if he's like, abusing you verbally, mentally, physically, then please don't take that. But don't go feeling like you want to seek revenge on someone because they feel like you are on some type of social media cheating on them. That's not the way to prove your point. That's definitely not the way to prove your point. There are so many different ways and so many different avenues that you can choose to prove a point to your boyfriend or your girlfriend that you don't have to go and humiliate yourself in the process of trying to prove that point. So for one, you like, I love him and I only want to be with him. What type of advice do you need? The only thing that I can tell you is this. For one, you do need to explain to him that one, just because it says that you're active on Facebook does not necessarily mean that your ass is active on Facebook. It means that you have not signed the fuck out. Okay. That's what it genuinely means that you have not signed out of Facebook. For two, you need to have a pure D conversation, meaning a pure damn good conversation with him in regards to why would he think that you were speaking with your baby daddy and why did he feel that you were sleeping with him? Is it because he's not around? Because if that's the case, then you can feel the same way. He's not around. He's over there in the military base. He could be screwing too. How do you know that he's not? Like, I'm just saying these same feelings that he's getting towards you because he's not around. You could have them same feelings towards him because he's not around. Understand what I'm saying? So you need to kind of like reiterate that to him and let him know. However, the part about you wanting to cheat on him and do all sorts of things, sweetheart, maybe that's just something you already wanted to fucking do and you just trying to use him as what he's been coming at you as an excuse to do the shit. If you're going to do the shit, then just do it. But don't use him as an excuse, okay? Don't use his vulnerability as an excuse for you to go and spread your wings and fly away, like Troop says, okay? If you want to go ahead and fuck around, then go ahead and fuck around. But don't use him as an excuse as to why you was fucking around. You know what I'm saying? If he fuck around on you and you find out about it, bitch, then leave his ass the fuck alone. But don't do, like, no tick for tack shit. Like, that's the worst thing that anybody can do is that tick for tack shit. Like, when you're an adult, you grown, and you look hella grown, hella of a grown. When you're an adult and you grown, we don't do tick for tack we don't do like, oh, well, I'm going to do this because he done did this. Or I'm going to do this because I feel this type of way. That's not what we do. We either be grown folks about it and talk it out. 
or we be grown folks about it and we leave the person the fuck alone. But we don't be grown and leave the per stay with the person, but just do some tick for tack shit. Like that's like seeking revenge. And if you want to do tick for tack shit, that means that you really don't love that person. So when you say that he's the only person you want and you love him, then if you love him enough, you would not. You definitely would not think of it as, you know, well. <laughs> I'm going to cheat on him because you really didn't give me no reason as to why you would want to cheat on him. You didn't say, well, because I feel like he's cheating on me or because I know he's cheating on me or because he's being disrespectful to me. You didn't say any of those things. All you said was this. And I'm going to repeat it because I don't want to feel like I'm bugging the fuck out because sometimes I be bugging out. Okay. I thought he was a good man. He even told me that he's not for me and I can do better and better is not him. Now, I've been faithful to him, faithfully waiting, but now I don't know. So he wrote me back on Facebook and told me we're okay. Now I feel like cheating on him and doing all kind of stuff. I even have a dildo, but I barely use it. He's controlling and he's not even here. Now, for one, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really like anybody controlling, okay? Like, there's a certain level to to some control and like i don't know what you what your idea of being controlling is but you know what i noticed about some men like in general they don't have to be with me but i noticed it's just like from reading all of these emails that i received for real talk they surely do get jealous of your social media ladies like seriously men get so jealous about their woman's social media and i for the life of me cannot figure it out why like so you dudes can have fucking social media and you can have facebook and twitter and goddamn playboy whatever but once a female gets a social media and they have too much of a following, you guys have a heart attack. Swear they fucking everybody on there be like, oh, why is he, why is he, why is he friend requesting you? I have no clue. Okay. Oh, because he don't look like he gay or he need any wig tips. Oh, my God. Like, this is the things that I used to have to go through. Okay. Like, okay, I have like a million friends on here. What does it matter? Well, they should all be ladies. You cannot tell the world. You cannot tell the world who should want a friend request me. Like, this is the things that women in general have to go through. But then when I go on your Facebook friend page and all these old bitches, all these old Cadillacs, okay? We're going to call them Cadillacs. All these old Cadillacs on your page talking about, oh, what's up? Hey, ain't seen you in a minute. How's your family doing? Oh, and then it goes another bit. Oh, you still looking just as good as you were, you old Cadillac bitch? I don't say nothing about it because it's like, okay, but these are old Cadillacs that you knew. You know what I'm saying? These old Cadillacs is the bitches that you knew. These motherfuckers that's on my Facebook page, I don't know them personally. They just want to follow me. And if they want to follow me, then I welcome them, okay? Like, seriously. But men do get very jealous over a woman's social media. And I don't know why. They feel like every man in the world is probably going to flop to their woman and that they're going to be stolen away. Nigga, if you were a fucking man enough and securing your shit then Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or any other social media really shouldn't fucking affect you and make you feel intimidated. Now, as far as your baby daddy is concerned, I'm not sure if you're on there talking to him because did you say that or not? Let's see. My man is the military, so because he thinks I'm friends with my baby daddy on Facebook and he thinks we're sleeping around. So are you or are you not friends with your baby daddy? It doesn't even matter if you are or not. It doesn't, and it shouldn't matter. What does it fucking matter if you are friends with your kid's father on, on any type of social media? So I guess like when you're, when you are broken up with your children's spouse, your children's father or mother, right? If y'all break up, Y'all shouldn't even speak to each other no more. But I mean, like, because, like, in the real world, some men really do believe that. Like, you better not even call that. Well, then we got a kid together. Why I just can't call and say, I don't give a shit. He better not even call. Well, then we got a kid. I don't care. He better not even like none of your pictures on social media. This is how men be acting like. I think for the child's sake, it would be cordial and nice for you guys to at least be friends because you guys do have a child together, regardless of the child's age. It doesn't even fucking matter. Regardless of the child's age, you should, you should still be able to be friends. You guys are parents. Like, when men or women think like this, it's like... Bitch, grow the fuck up. I don't want his ass because if I did, I would have still been with him. Not... 
not him friend requesting me on Facebook. We ain't been together in 10 years. Nigga, go sit your fucking ass down somewhere in the corner and find a friend while you at it. This is how I be this is how I fucking be feeling. Like seriously. It's just social media. Like some people do take it to the extreme. You know, they 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 find love on social media, which there is nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? They can be catfishing on social media. That's kind of fucked up. But you know, I, I don't I don't take it serious. Like I have men that DM me through Instagram, be like, "What's up, Shorty?" All this. Like, listen. Just because I said thank you because you commented on a picture on a post that I posted does not mean for your fucking raggedy ass to be fucking sending me DMs. Like, you weren't the only one I said thank you to. There was like 10 other people. So don't feel like you special and you can go and DM me. Like, we don't do that. And things like that, you know, I'm the type of person I am, I will shun you away real quick because I get really, really, really insulted. Like, you know, like I had this young kid and he was young. I know he was young. He sends me a DM. And I don't even, hey, beautiful, what's good? I looked at him and I, not only did I look at him and start laughing, okay, but I looked at him like, why did this troll come from underneath the bridge? Why the fuck is Billy Goat's Gruff troll doing here on my DM? Like, why? And on top of that, dude, you're like, what? I said, first of all, why are you even, this is the message that I sent back. First of all, why are you even DMing me? Second of all, what are you like, 16? What, what is your problem? Do you have something to do? Go find a hobby. This is how I handle people because don't, listen, men can be something else and women too, okay? But men can be something else because you will put a smile or thank you next to any comment that someone has commented on. Like, okay, say there's 50 people that commented. And I liked each comment and responded. Why would you take it upon yourself to just send me a DM? Like, well, you you know I thought you was feeling me because you responded. Nigga, I was just being fucking social media courteous, okay? Like, that's etiquette. I was having social media etiquette. Like, and y'all bitches don't have that. Like, just because someone liked a comment that you wrote doesn't mean take your raggedy fucking bitch ass and fucking send me a private message. No, it doesn't. It means to look at the comment and take your ass and keep skipping the fuck along. And that's what the fuck some people need to realize. But your boyfriend, he's a little bit jealous. I'm, I'm feeling like he's jealous and you are a little bit confused because if you were just told by he... That y'all were okay, and then now you feel like you want to cheat, then, girl, you got me all the way fucked up. Like, on some seriousness, the best thing that I can tell you, my dear, is to to hash it out with him. Meaning, have a good old conversation, because by the time he's off from his training or whatever, I'm pretty sure he likes to sit back, kick back, and have a conversation with you via phone. So, that's the one thing that I would definitely do. But if you guys are messaging each other, then I would still... Let him know, listen, what's really good with us? You said we were okay, but I need some clarification. It's nothing wrong with that, especially if you really care for the person. But don't go cheating on the man because that's something you want to do. If that's what you're going to fucking do, sweetheart, then that's what you're going to do. But don't use him as a motherfucking excuse. I'm just saying. So on that note, we're going to get on to the next one because um, hmm, I felt like I answered the question, like, you know what I'm saying? This pretty little girl, well, she's not a little girl, but she's a little girl to me because I'm older than her. So she's so cute, sending me her pictures. I love when my subscribers send pictures to me because it just, it, it, it allows me to, you know what I'm saying, connect better, put a face with the, with the, with the problem that's going on, you know what I'm saying? For me, um, I'm just a very visual person, so I love to see who I'm speaking to throughout the video, so that way I can keep you on my mind as I'm talking. There was something I wanted to tell you guys, and now I just cannot remember for the life of me. All that sneezing and fuck me up. Okay, so, hey, April, so I changed the names in this Real Talk. I'm in desperate need of your advice. I watch Real Talks every day, so I figured you would be the best one to ask about this. So about six months ago, I met Bob. He was everything that a man should be. He was kind, sweet, caring. He had two jobs, worked extremely hard, and made me feel like an absolute queen. There is an age gap between us. I'm 22 and he's 30. So I explained to Bob in the beginning what was I? Oh, of our relationship. I'm a very strong-willed woman. I work a full-time job. I go to school part-time. I have my own apartment, my own car. I do everything very independently just because that's how I was raised. So four months into our relationship, Bob's lease was up on his apartment, and he asked if he could move in with me until he found another place. I wasn't sure at first because it was 
um, because we were still new, so new. He assured me he just needed time to find a place. I said, okay, that that was a month ago. After moving in his, after moving in, his entire personality became changed. He became a lot more controlling, questioning me, calling me 15 to 30 times a day when I explained to him that I was in school or working. He has the overnight job. He expects me to stay on the phone with him until 4 o'clock in the morning every night because he wants to make sure that I'm not doing anything. And I'm at that. I haven't been perfect before meeting him. And I had a lot of male friends. I was single for a really long time. And I was dating multiple people. And he knew this before we started our relationship. Now that I've cut all those people off, he doesn't believe me. Checks my phone while I'm sleeping. Asks me constantly about my gas usage in my car and where I spend my money. I never ask him for anything besides to pay his bills and half of the rent. Which his past month, which this past month, I have paid everything because his account was messed up. April, I'm suffocating. I told him recently he needs to find a place. That turned into a huge blow up, resulting in me driving three hours to my mom's so I could breathe. April, he needs to go. But am I wrong for still wanting the man I met six months ago? I put some pictures in. Love, um, can't say your name. Because she said she changed the names, but I don't know if she changed. Um, okay, she did. Okay. Love, um, Meal. So, <laughs> Meal has been with Bob for four months, and she is such a cutie. And he, um, his lease ran up, so he didn't have nowhere to go until he found a place to stay. And ever since he done moved in with her, he has become controlling, calls her every um, few minutes, 15 to 30 times a day, checks her phone, asks her about her gas mileage, what she be spending her money on, expects her to stay on the phone with him until he's, um, so I guess he gets off till 4 o'clock in the morning and then go to school and work. First of all, I think the nigga's lying about his lease being up. I think the nigga got fucking kicked the fuck out, okay? Because if your lease is up, don't you think you would know about it and you would look in advance for an apartment? Why would you wait till the last motherfucking minute when your lease is up, up to find somewhere to live? If that's the case and you ain't found nowhere, you would just renew your fucking lease, right? I mean, that would be me. Like, I don't want to move. So when my lease is up, I'm just going to renew it. And if you had, he had every opportunity to find somewhere to live because when your lease is about to be up, they do send you out paperwork saying, hey, would you like to renew your lease for another year or two? I know this because, hey, hello, I live somewhere too. So I, I find that very hard to believe about Bob's ass. The one thing that I do find um, that I do believe is that the nigga's sneaky and he's a fucking liar. Now look at him. Now all of a sudden, as soon as he's moved in, his whole attitude has changed. But your, your bitch ass wasn't worried about that when you weren't living here. You didn't expect her to stay on the phone with you till four in the morning. You weren't checking her calls or anything like that. Now that you live there, you're expecting her to follow your rules. That's her apartment. Let me tell you something, Mil. Um, I would have the nigga removed from my place. Like if. When If you're telling him that it's time for him to go and he needs to find a place, but it always results in a big blow up argument, then something is mentally wrong with him. That's how I'm feeling because you can't get mad with someone when you were the one who asked, hey, can I stay with you until I find a place because my lease is up? You cannot stay there forever. And when you have outstayed your welcome over a month or two and that person comes to you and says, well, hey, listen, I was wondering when you're going to get a place because you can't get mad and start blowing up and shit. You cannot get fucking mad. That's not their problem. What he's probably doing is trying to control the situation and take over and stay there. That nigga probably is not even looking for a place to stay, okay? I guarantee you, if he was looking for a place to stay, he would have never got caught out there without his with his lease running out and had no place else to stay. If my fucking lease ran out and I wasn't aware of it, a bitch like me would just be like, you know what, let me just renew the lease. I'm going to just stay. Because I didn't have time to look for another place, so I'm just dead. Because um, it's hard to find a place for two. Um, he's just lying. I just feel like he's lying. So my thing is this. If you really want him out, like you say you do, then my thing would be this. I would have the sheriffs escort his ass the fuck out. Like, you're not going to be up in my shit acting crazy, throwing shit the fuck around, and doing all kind of weird shit. Like, we're not about to do that. <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. We're not about to do that. Okay, so me personally, I would have to have him removed from my home by the law. Some people would probably be like, oh, look, call the Pope Paul on a nigga. The nigga is acting fucking psycho, psychotic. 
blowing up, having arguments, talking about who she on the phone with, where she spent her money at, checking her gas mileage. When a motherfucker starts checking your gas mileage, that right there lets you know you got a fucking lunatic in your presence. Like, I'm just saying. Who the fuck goes and checks somebody's gas mileage? Like, I would not even... What the fuck? Do you go out there and just take a screenshot of that shit, like a picture of it? And like, okay, it's at the line. The, the gas level is on the line right in the middle. She better not fucking go nowhere. Because if I find out that shit is underneath by a quarter of a tank, I'm flipping the fuck out. This is what I'm talking about. Crazy shit. Like, if you fucking acting crazy like that, you got to go. You ain't about to be in my motherfucking house acting all kind of crazy, talking about why is your gas mileage low? Really? Could you imagine some dude coming up to you, like, not even coming up to you, excuse me, but your man, like... I seen your gas mileage today. Okay. And? Why is it so low? Maybe because it needs gas in it. A word? Yeah, because it wasn't like that yesterday. I know how many miles it takes you to get to work. You used a quarter of a tank today. Okay, so? Where you went afterwards. What? You heard me. Where'd you go afterwards? You get out my fucking face about my goddamn gas mile. Let's talk about where the fuck I went after. What is wrong with you? If you're so worried about the shit, won't you tip in on that motherfucker? That would be me, okay? That would definitely be me because you ain't about to be coming up in my face with no psychic shit talking about what about my gas mileage and where the fuck is my gas mileage at. And on top of that, talking about where, what the fuck I spend my money on, nigga, I spend it on the bills here in my house. How about you take your money and spend it on a place for you to stay in your funky ass attitude? Now, first of all, Mill, you done just said that you want to still be with him. Okay, so he's been living with you for two months now because it's six months going on. And he's been in there since four months in your relationship. But you said, is it wrong for me to still want him? Let me tell you something. That nigga is fucking crazy, bitch. Leave him the fuck alone. Like, for real, when you got a nigga asking you about your gas mileage, then that nigga is crazy. Who the fuck pays attention to that? Like, on some real shit, leave that nigga the fuck alone. Six months is not even a relationship. That's getting to know somebody. That's the getting to know you, period, okay? That's when, you you know what? I told y'all bitches this a long time ago. When you first meet someone, you meet their what? Their representative, meaning... This is me, April, and I'm just as nice as can be. And I'm actually really a nice person. But you think that I would meet somebody and show them my real bitchy attitude? Then a the nigga wouldn't want to be with me if that was the case. I don't have to do that because I'm already with somebody. But I'm just saying, I'm definitely going to change up my attitude and be real nice. That's what the guy Bob was doing. And then when he moved the fucking, because he moved in, he got what he got, he wanted. He, he got his motherfucking foot in the door. His whole attitude didn't change. His attitude didn't change. The real him came out. You weren't fucking with the representative anymore. Why do you need the representative? His representative of himself already did the job, meaning he already got his foot in that motherfucking door. He already did the job. He don't have to keep faking the funk and being um, fake Bob anymore. You know what I'm saying? He going to be Bob now. This He about to be Bob for real. You didn't see his attitude change. You just seen the real him. So now that you see the real him, why the fuck would you want to stay with him after you didn't see the real him? If a motherfucker asks me about my gas mileage, I'm automatically copping an attitude because for one, you're not about to sit here and ask me about my fucking gas. Nigga, you don't buy my motherfucking gas. Don't ask me about that shit. Don't ask me about no crazy shit like that. I don't even pay attention to how far I've been going on the gas. I just know when that shit is almost empty, the bitch take it to the fucking gas station and fill that shit up so I don't get stranded on the road nowhere. I don't fucking clock my gas tank like that and if you're doing it then that's wrong on top of that if the nigga is getting on your phone while you're sleeping then that's right there tells you that he don't fucking trust you but he don't start trusting you until he moves in bitch he's controlling and he's crazy okay and he expects you to stake up onto the phone with him until four o'clock in the morning you must be out your rabbit ass mind dude goodbye first of all you cannot call me 15 to 30 times in one motherfucking day and ask me what am i doing what time did i piss or eat lunch you're not about to do that to me that shit is irritating i don't even like people calling me like that that's for one and i damn sure don't have time to be talking to you 15 to 30 times a motherfucking day or answering dumbass questions about what the fuck i spent my money on okay now here is the key to happiness when you find a crazy motherfucker like that okay one who's probably going to kick the door in or put his face through it and be like honey i'm home then that's when you have to tell that nigga it's time for you to go and if you can't take my word on telling you it's time for you to motherfucking go well i'm gonna call the law enforcement and they'll be more than happy here to escort your fucking raggedy ass the fuck out of here 
Okay. Now go worry about the next bitch gas. So is it wrong for you to still want him after six months? Bitch, yes. We all get lonely sometimes and we want to be in a relationship. I get it. I fucking get it, but I'm not about to be stressed the fuck out by no man talking about what kind of gas, what kind of mileage, what kind of money. I'm not going to do that. This is my shit and this is going to stay my shit. And that's what you should fucking tell him. Don't worry about my gas and my money. Worry about finding you a place to live. Listen, six months is not a relationship. You can't even say you love him. Some people can't say they love somebody after six months, but to me, that's honestly the getting to know you, period. You are living in a la-la land with the motherfucker, okay? And if you move him in at four months, then, girl, let me tell you something. I never feel sorry for a motherfucker because four months is really not a relationship. Four months is like two weeks to me, okay? And you ain't about to be staying up in my motherfucking space after four months. Once you get a motherfucker in there, it is so hard to get them out. Get them the fuck out of your house. That's like inviting a vampire in. You know, once you invite a vampire in, it is so hard to get rid of them and get them the fuck out. All you got to do is say, come on in, and they here. And then they try to take the fuck over. But I know y'all like, bitch, why is you talking about a fucking vampire? Because I like vampires, and that's that's how it really is. And that nigga's a blood-sucking leech. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying. So, you guys, on that note, a girl is about to be out. Mill, you know what to do. Have that nigga removed out of your place so you can get back to your peace. There's no reason why you should be driving three fucking hours away to your mama house to get some fresh air and breathe out of your own shit. Like, don't let nobody run you off of your own property, your own house. Girl, please. Ain't no dick worth that. You got, like, psycho dick and shit. Like, gas mileage. Like, really? Like, I can only imagine. So, yes, you guys, I'm going to go. I got to get Mumsy from school. I hope you guys are not mad with me about this real talk being like 30 minutes in length. I love you guys. I will speak to you guys soon. I do apologize for the video looping last week on real talk. Like, I actually actually took the clip and put it back like twice in the video. So, I do apologize for that, but I did fix it. Um, thank goodness my um, good friend Felicia, you know, Hourglass, informed me about that. And, um... She called me and let me know, so I do apologize for that, you guys. Um, but I will speak to you guys on another note. I do have videos already uploaded to YouTube for my vacation and shit, so I'll definitely be vlogging and shit like that. So, yes, you guys, I love you. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Mm.